Okay, so here we are in part five of Learn How to Podcast 101, the video tutorial series. In part one, we gave an overview of how podcasting worked. In part two, we talked about tagging your MP3 files. In part three, we gave you all kinds of equipment options you could choose. And in part four, we talked about website and media hosting. Now here in part five, we're gonna be talking about properly setting up your podcast RSS feeds. This happens to be the most common mistake most podcasters make. And we're gonna go ahead and turn back to the tutorial now to find out how you can avoid making that mistake. I wanna to talk to you now about proper RSS feed setup. I'm gonna get a little geeky here if you don't mind, but um, an RSS feed is nothing more than just a coded file with a bunch of text inside of it. All right, and this text is all, co it's kinda of like HTML. If, you, if some of you know what HTML looks like, well, it's just different. It's a different language, different tags. And so standard, there's standard RSS tags and, you know, your WordPress site and a lot of other sites out there that have RSS built in. Well, you could technically take that RSS feed and, and just send that over to iTunes. The problem is, though, is that iTunes is not going to get some very important information it needs. So basically, iTunes, uh, for everything to show up properly, they have some extra tags that they would love for you to use inside of your RSS feed. Now, I use a service called FeedBurner, and FeedBurner will add the iTunes tags to your WordPress feed, and I'm gonna show you the, the, the way that this works in just a little bit as well. But here's the situation. PowerPress plugin can add these tags as well. So the question is, why would I still recommend FeedBurner? And of course, we'll talk about that here on this next slide. So here's the situation, all right? Let's say over on the left-hand side, we have some third-party services, podbean.com, blogtalkradio, talkshoe.com. Those three are all services that will allow you to, they're, they're an all-inclusive podcasting solution. Posterous is not technically an all-in-one podcasting solution, though I learned just yesterday that it can be, and I'm gonna give you that demo in a little bit. But the the, the thing is, is if you sign up for Podbean, you sign up for Blog Talk, you sign up for TalkShoe, all three of those services are going to want to take the RSS feed that they create for you and they want to submit it to iTunes and they want you to take it and submit it to Zune and BlackBerry and all the other podcasting directories. This is a very bad idea. Because what happens is, what happens if you start out on Podbean and then all of a sudden you say, you know what, Cliff was right. I really do want to own my own home on the web. I'm sick of all this other junk that's on here and all of a sudden this was free but now it's five times, it's it's $50 a month, $200 a month. This is just crazy. I should just go out and get a hosting account and I should just go ahead and, and move my content and my stuff over to my own home on the web. Well, guess what? Your audience, let's just say you've been podcasting for eight, nine, 10 months before you make this decision. Well, the situation is that all the people who are subscribed to your podcast, they're all subscribed to your Podbean RSS feed or your Blog Talk Radio RSS feed. This is not a good thing, especially when I will, I'll tell you what, of the three up there, I won't say which ones are which, two of them will, in fact, hold your RSS feed and your, and your subscribers hostage they will they will not do it they they will not fix it to where you know there's a there's this one little bit of code that you could put in your rss feed if you had access to it where if you just put in this one little bit of code all those people who are subscribed to your podcast would immediately be subscribed to your new podcast that is now hosted somewhere else like on your own wordpress site but some of these other services won't do that for you all right so what do we do we set up everything the correct way, all right? So uh, basically the correct way is go ahead, if, you want, if you're starting out, you're just testing the waters, uh, then go ahead and set up your Podbean account, your blog talk radio, but whatever you do, do not let them submit your RSS feed to iTunes. If you, know, if you go into iTunes and do a search for your show and you notice all of a sudden there's the listing that you submitted, but now all of a sudden there's also a blog talk radio or a Podbean or a talk shoe feed that was submitted by them, you need to go in and click report a concern, remove podcast, type in your name, your email address, or whatever else it asks for, and put in there, please remove this feed. This is a duplicate of my own personal feed that I submitted for my show. 
And then it takes probably about a week to 10 days and they'll eventually um, get it removed, hopefully. All right. So what you want to do is you basically you can take any of those services. You take their RSS feed, including, by the way, including WordPress. I, I should have put WordPress down there at the bottom. You can take the WordPress RSS feed. Even if you ho host your own site, you own your own home on the web, I still recommend taking that over to FeedBurner. And then what FeedBurner does is it asks you some information about uh, your podcast that iTunes and other podcast directories really like to know about your podcast. And it includes this. And what it does is it, it takes your original free feed, RSS feed, and it creates a new RSS feed that is hosted by Google's FeedBurner. And then what you do is you take your feed from FeedBurner, like feeds.feedburner.com slash PAM, for example, is Podcast Answer Man. And you take the FeedBurner feed and you submit that to the directories. That's what you have people subscribe to. And the reason why I love this is number for two reasons. Number one, it adds those iTunes tags to your RSS feed. And it also does this. If I set up my feed originally from Podbean, put it in the feed burner and send it out to all those directories. And then I'll, I get like 7,000 subscribers and say, wow, I want to have my own home on the web. I can then go over to WordPress, set up all my stuff over there, configure it the way that I like. And, and there's just this one tiny little setting. It's called original feed. And I can say, you know what? FeedBurner, I know that you're going from Podbean's RSS feed and now I, you know, and then you create my, you know, feeds.feedburner.com slash PAM out of that. Well, I want you to stop taking it from there and I want you to now take it from podcastanswerman.com slash feed. And I want you to, I just put that as in as my new original feed. And FeedBurner says, oh, no problem. I'll forget about that stuff that I had over there from Podbean. I'll start pulling it from your new site. And everybody who subscribed to feeds.feedburner.com slash PAM, no big deal. They won't even know anything changed. All right. So how do you submit your podcast to the podcast directories? Well, uh, I'm going to give you the links anyway. Uh, let's see here. Podcastanswerman.com forward slash submit iTunes, all one word will take you directly to how to do the or to the place where you would need to do this in iTunes. And by the way, uh, in the bonus tutorial on how to set up a podcast for free, I'm going to actually submit that podcast to iTunes or at least get to that stage where you see what it looks like. And so that's included in this tutorial at the end. Uh, Blackberry, uh, you go to podcastanswerman.com slash submit Blackberry. And that's going to take you directly to the page where you have to create an account. And it's just going to ask you for your RSS feed. It's, it's real simple. But basically, you go to podcastanswerman.com slash submit BlackBerry. You sign up for an account. And say, you click a little button that says add a podcast. It says what's your feed. And give them your feed burner feed, not the original feed from the whatever service you're using or your own site. Give them the feed burner feed. And this is the third one that I recommend that you get into, the Zune Podcast Directory. And here's how you get into the Zune Podcast Directory. I am not kidding you. You email rob at zune.net and uh, just tell him, make sure that you tell him, Cliff from Podcast Answer Man said that it was okay to email him a link to your RSS feed so that he could submit it to the Zune Podcast Directory. I am not kidding you when I tell you that this is the only way to get into that Zune podcast directory. You, you probably you could email him at rob at zune.net and not mention my name and still get in there. I'm not saying that you have to know my name, but just make sure that you tell him that, you know, hey, Cliff from Podcast Answer Man said that if I emailed you and gave you a link to my feed burner feed, that you would put me into the, the podcast directory. Chances are it'll happen within 24 hours. And with that, that is going to conclude part five of this tutorial on Learn How to Podcast 101. I do want to just say real quickly here that there are several other podcast directories out there. However, the ones that are going to drive the most traffic to your podcast are going to be the iTunes podcast directory, followed by the Zoom podcast directory, then the BlackBerry podcast directory. And then beyond that, it's really Google. I'm in lots of the other podcast directories. And I can tell you right now, I have great stats and can tell you that very little traffic comes from any of the other podcast directories out there. There are probably more than 100, and a majority of them launched back in 2006 or 2007, and they all pretty much died out in popularity 
by 2008. So most of those things are out there. People are submitting brand new podcasts to them all the time. But the truth is, is very few people actually go looking for podcasts there. Most people, when they're looking for a podcast, if they're an Apple product user like the iPhone, iPad, iPod, they're going to go to iTunes. If they're a Windows phone user, they're going to go to the Zune podcast directory, especially for all those people who still have a Zune as well. And BlackBerry users are obviously going to turn to the BlackBerry directory that's right there built into their phone. Beyond that, people usually typically will search for a podcast via Google, just typing in the topic of what they're looking for and the name podcast right after it. And well, that's going to wrap up here for part five. I hope that you'll be joining me in part six where I'm going to share my proven workflow, how I do podcasting from beginning to end that requires almost no post-production at all. See you there.